Today we're gonna make a handstand trainer, and I have a hunch. I've seen this before, and uh, what it is, it's uh, just, it's really simple. You just need something to rest your forearms against, so that way you can isolate um, the work of the smaller joint right here, the smallest joint all the way, because this is the smallest joint all the way through to your feet that is uh, attached to your body when you're upside down inverted to try to hold yourself into a hand in a handstand. So it's uh, when you teach gymnastics, what you would do sometimes if you have the time, you'd grab the person's back, hold them there, and go below the shoulders, hold them there, grab the forearms, hold them there, and then on top of the palms of the hands, hold them there. And I'll, you'll do that stage as they get better and better at controlling all those joints all the way up. And uh, a way to, to try to do this so they can try to do it themselves is to have something like a springboard. Usually you see it in gymnastics, they use a springboard and they can rest their palms, the back of their palms, uh, I mean um, wrists against the uh, board itself and just push. Um, so I'm gonna try to make something like that. Um, I think it's gonna work best on a carpet floor because of the way it's uh, the bottom is. It has Velcro. Uh, I'll do two versions. I think one one might work a little better on a wooden floor. So, all right. So that's the goal for today. That's the project, and uh, if it goes well, you'll see it. Part of the design that uh, I'm going to use today for this is going to try to put some emphasis on portability and. Um, adjustability so we're going to look at trying to make a design that's uh, easily collapsible easily put back together and uh, easy to transport because of that and also easy to repair if something were to break all right that's the goal Let's go ahead and cut it at, 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 uh, at 19, right? So what we'll do, we'll put this at 19, like that. And then I'm going to cut it at 19 inches. Just like this. Okay. And then what we'll do, that, what that will do, give me a more manageable piece of wood to cut. It doesn't have to be perfect. You put an X on this side, because that's the waist side, so you want the kerf of the blade to be on this side of the line. That's why you put the X over there, okay? All right, so I have the piece laid out. Um, the blade's all lined up, height's set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just make a rip cut right here, and then uh, that should work well. Um, I think, yeah, that's it. So, don't forget your gloves. Oh, I'm sorry, don't forget your uh, glasses, respirator. I'm going to protect your uh, lungs from particulates.
so while after I made the rip cut, I made, I made, I made a really nice discovery. Um, I think, truthfully, right, this right here is 19 inches. I don't think this is going to get any wider than this. So this is a this is too much, right? And this is perfect because this is so my shoulders aren't that wide, right? But if I got that wide, let's say I got that wide, I'd still be able to get on here. So I think I think this much is really good. Okay, so that's a pretty that's pretty wide. All right, so I'm going to do 19 inches across the top right here. So for those of you looking, again, this is going to be 19 from here to here. All right. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do mark it off where I put the uh, three inches uh, right here. So one, two, three. Put an arrow there. Arrow here. Go like this. going to uh, draw a line right here. Like that. Okay. So there's a line right there. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set the table saw to cut this. Uh, I'm going to do it four times. So, yeah. I'll do it like four times. And then that should give us exactly uh, five times or four, four or five times. I'm not sure, but that that's 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 the uh, those are the only cuts left to do um, with a table saw. And that that type of cutting is called a gang cut. So I'm gonna do a gang cut on that. Okay, here we are on a table saw. Um, and move this over. All right, get it right where it kind of cuts on the waist side. Perfect, right? So that's it right there. And moving over just a little bit more. Yeah, no. So being super anal here. There you go. Yeah, it's perfect. So that's. That's three inches, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a rip cut, multiple rip cuts of that. Um, here's a little public service announcement. Uh, this table saw, it's called kickback when the wood gets binded up. I use these right here for safety. So what you do, right? You uh, just take some wood, a little clamp. Right. It's not gonna be super tight. Just enough to hold it in place. Yeah. Right. So it's just there to like keep the piece down, so that way it never flies back and kicks up. It's a little bit forward, so that way it keeps it from falling off. Um, so it's it's multifaceted what it does. Uh, got my guide set up here. I have my. Uh, this little lovely doohiggy because it's gonna you can push like that to keep a nice even pressure on it. Um, other than that, here we go, we're gonna make these cuts. Let's do it. Gang cuts, they're called.
Alright, so the remainder piece of this plywood, I really like the size of it. Um, this is the one that I, that I cut the uh, four pieces off of. Um, so this is an idea... Uh, the, okay, let me give you the dimensions of this again, right? So we have uh, 19 this way. Then we have uh, 11 and a half this way. Okay, it's actually more like 11 and uh, 6... No, 11 and... It's 11 and 6... 6 sixteenths. Yeah, 11 and 6 sixteenths. So again, this is 11. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be my, this is gonna be my bottom. So it's gonna be this is 11 and 6 sixteenths this way, and this here is 19. Okay, so 19, 11. I write it again right down here. This is 11 and 6 sixteenths. Alright, so, so that's the dimensions I'm going to use. 19 here. And 11 and 6 sixteenths this way. Okay? And then what I'm going to do now right, is, uh, this is what it's going to look like. This is going to be like this. Take two of these, glue them together like that. So that way your forearms can go against this. This will be suspended by this dowel like here. All right. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, glue these two together. So I'm going to glue this now together um, to the sides that I marked on. What I'm going to do is glue those together so we can hide all those marks. And um, yeah. So I've got myself an old rag, some hot water, and this stick to take the glue out of that. I'm going to get myself a glove. like gloves, plural. Okay, so once you have everything in position, let's go ahead and glue this together. I like to put the glue right in the middle of the piece. And you don't have to go too crazy with it because once you clamp it together, it's going to spread out. So, I just want to lay that out. Let's see. Try to keep it in the middle as much as you can because it's going to spread out, like I said. You don't have to worry about covering the entire piece. So there you go. So that's it. That's in position. Um, it's ready to be clamped together. So what I'm going to do now 
I'm just gonna take the sock and clean up the uh, the stick I used to spread this with. clamp it so it stays even. You're going to need a lot of clamps. Well, not really. But enough. The first thing you want to do is just make sure to give it some time to set. You, know, you don't want to clamp it down really, really tight at first. So what we'll do now is uh, set up the, uh, the clamping station. So when I do this, I need pieces of wood to block it so it doesn't slide around. Okay, so I'm gonna try to find some pieces of wood right now. All right, so here we go. Something like this. This works really well. It's kind of tall. Something like this. Even better. Yeah. I need to keep it. I need to pull it together. So I need to put something on this side. something like this on this side here. So I'll need one more piece of wood on this side over here. So that mar the piece. Like perfect. So that's how I'm gonna clamp it. So I'm gonna clamp that one first. in place so I have to push this way to make sure mm. this is actually not flat okay hold on Yeah, that feels closer to, to being lined up. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a... I really should put one of these on top, yeah. So to do that, see the glue is already starting to squeeze out. Just do that so that way it doesn't, um, doesn't end up, you know, becoming a part of that. Okay. 
And this one I'm not going to put on too, too tight. It doesn't need to be tight. It just needs to, like, hold it down. Okay? So I still need this to slide around and stuff. So I need to pull it together, right? So we'll do that. Is this? Wondering if I have other pieces of wood. I have a weird feeling I might want to use this. So let me try to get another piece of wood. So that's in the middle. All right, it's not super tight yet. I'm gonna do another one right over here. That that's pushed. this is pushed down. Okay. It's nice and even. Uh, let's get some glue off the edge here. Right, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna tap that together. So it's not perfect, perfect, but it's good enough, okay? So... I'm gonna tighten these just a little bit. Too, too much. Right? And then what I'm gonna do is let it sit for about 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna come back and tighten it really, really tight, so that way it'll... Uh, It'll like uh, it won't slide as I do it because it'll be uh, or it'll be already partially set. All right. This is done now. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pull the clamps off.
glued together now. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to clean it off a little bit. So I just take the rag, wipe off the excess glue. So all the glue is gone now, and then uh, I'm going to set up the drill holes. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I need to use this uh, as my template. Um, so this is going to be my template. This is the one that I glued together, and I have another piece that I'm going to also use. So I know that the dowel itself is one and a, one and a, a quarter diameter right so what I'm going to do is uh, mark this off so I'm going to go about I'm going to go uh, to the middle so the middle is one and a half because it's three inches like that Draw a line down the middle. Okay, so that's the middle of that, right? And then I'm probably going to go in about, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go in about three inches. That's a three inch line right there already. I'm going to go in three inches on this side. Okay, cool. So that's that. That's my center hole. I'm going to drill through that. And that's going to be my uh, template to uh, drill through uh, this and the other one, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to uh, I'll put my uh, one and a quarter inch bit in. Okay. It's pretty loose. Yeah. Slide it in. Tighten that up. and tight. And now I need to set up the, uh, the table so we get this centered. Alright, so here's the piece set up. Uh, I need to put a sacrificial piece of wood underneath it so that way I can um, I can drill through without having to worry about uh, but what, it, what this does when you drill through stuff, it, like, it messes up the back of it. So the sacrificial piece of wood just helps it um, not get all marred up. So I'm going to go ahead and raise this up a little bit more. Right. Now that's raised up, I'm going to line up those holes. And then I'm going to go ahead and drill it, okay? So. Good. Don't forget your uh, glasses. All right. Might want to plug that in.
That's what I mean. You see how it like kind of like messes up the back there. So you want to make sure you have something underneath it so it gets as clean as possible because this is the front too clean that is. And here's the back. All right. I'm going to do the same for the other side. So that's the uh, that's the one of the holes. Here's the other one, right? And uh, these will be the uh, template. This is going to be the template. So I'm going to use that to drill out the other holes. All right. So now that I have the uh, the template drilled out, I have this lined up. And what I'm going to do is uh, stick these two together. So I'm going to use this uh, double-sided tape. It's uh, it's by Duck. Oh my God, this thing is great. I've had this thing for too long, and now I'm going to actually try to finish it off. Um, Home Depot used to sell it, and then they stopped selling it. So I think you have to get it online. I don't know where else to get it, but this is the best thing I've ever I've ever owned. So. It's super sticky. All right, so put some here in the middle, like that. Actually, uh, fold it over like that, so that way I can pull it off in the future much easier. So I did that. All right, so take this now and line it up. That feels really, really good, stuck together really nice. I know what I'm going to do, line up the drill press and drill it. What I'm going to do now is uh, place this piece And I want to 
want to get the depth right, so let's see how far this goes. That actually works out really well. So I just wanted to stop just a little bit before it hits the top, but don't come all the way through. So this depth is perfect for this. So now that's set up, go ahead and start to drill it out. Okay, so that's it. So that's drilled out. This is going to be the top part. And then uh, I'll put another one on. So that's the top right there. The, the, the dial will sit inside of that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. So this is the bottom now. Here, again, here's a template. It's got the double sided tape on it. I'm going to put this. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill it out. Alright, before I actually drill this, I have to put some, the double sided tape, I got to put more of it, but instead of doing that, I'm just going to go like this.
Okay. So that should hold it a lot better. Yeah, that actually she works really well. Right, so I got this uh, taped together templates on there. I'm going to go ahead and tr just drill out those holes like that. I got the depth checked, so it will go all the way through without touching the metal. Go get your glasses and your respirator. Okay, that's it. Both sides are drilled out. And, uh, yeah, that's all. This is going to be the front up here. And, uh, let it glue down to there, right? And this like, will sit in here like that top of this then you just put your hand your forearm next to it There'll be another another dowel right here um, so that's it I'm probably gonna make this a little bit lower I think just to make sure you know I'll keep it the same I think that should be enough um, I don't know I'll have to figure out the final height but what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna glue this down so that way it can be together and then I'm going to drill a little bit into this. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that glue up, the gluing process up I mean. Here we have the base set up and uh, I'm going to try to glue this down like this. So to do this I'm going to just mark it off just a little bit so I can get a little rough idea where to uh, put the glue. Okay, so I know all the glue is going to be right here. Um, I've got my warm water already set up. 
You remember I put that velcro on earlier? I should have waited because um, what's going to happen is that this is going to have a lot of pressure from clamping. I think it might damage the velcro. So, for future reference, just do the velcro part last. I was a little anxious and wanted to get it done, so that's why I did it first. Okay. So. So I'm going to take my rag and wipe the glue off. So again, this is a warm, warm water I'm using with this rag. Okay, so now that's in place, I'm going to go ahead and uh, Take this here, just rest it on top of it, line it up nicely like this. Okay, so. So that's going to settle a little bit there. Right. And what I'm going to do is uh, take, take this here just to get this all lined up like that. So the front's lined up. And then I'm going to clamp it. Down really tightly because uh, it's gonna, I don't want it to move. And right here, okay, so that's good. All right. And then I'm going to now clamp uh, this down a little bit. So. go like that to keep this coming forwards. 
And then I'm gonna clamp that, pulling it towards me. Pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely lined up really nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna have to hammer this a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, clamp this down over here. That's pretty, pretty perfect. Pretty close to perfect. Nothing's, nothing's possible that's made by humans can be perfect. But you get the idea. All right, so I'm gonna let that settle, right? For about 30 minutes. I'm gonna come back down, I'm gonna really tighten it down. And then it'll be, it'll be good, the, the base will be done. So this is all settled in, it's nice and dry now. I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. So that's it. Uh, we have a base in place, and now I'm going to uh, drill out those holes. I mean, I'm going to drill them a little deeper. The depth of this, I haven't moved this from the last time I used it, so it goes down to like right there. You can see that, which is perfect. I just need to get a little bit deeper into the uh, this wood, so I can get a little bit more um, support for the dowel. And uh, so this, I'm just going to drill this out with uh, this one right now. So let's see, line this up.
Okay, so there you go. I just drilled it out a little bit more so that way both holes can be a little deeper so the dowel can sit a little further inside of the piece. All right. So I thought about this a little bit and I think uh, I'm going to use this size but it's, it's a little too high for really really small people so I'm going to use I'm going to use this length right here. So that looks like the dowel is going to be, uh, that looks like um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half. So six and a half inches is, uh, is what I'm going to cut this at. I'm going to do two cuts and then that's it. So this is hands down my favorite tool I own. Uh, it's a double bevel sliding compound saw. Um, so it's really cool to get these cuts exactly the way you want them, right? So then go like this, slide that in, right? Take a piece of wood, put that guard up like that, right? slide that in, right? And then I should be able to, oops, it's a little short, so I need to snow just a little bit longer to do this. Let's try this, here we go. You know what? I got this. What I'm gonna do. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cut the end off for this. Because it wasn't really flat. I'm gonna re redo the measurement here. So, let's get this to. Okay, cool. So, got that there. That's perfect, right? So, now that's perfect. What I'm gonna do. I'm going to tighten this down so it doesn't move. Right. That's it. Okay. So that's the piece. I'm going to test it real quick, make sure the height looks good to me. Yeah, that's perfect. So, we do another one. This is called batch cutting. So, perfect. So, I have these two right now, same exact height, and uh, that's it. All I have to do now is make the project more comfortable, and uh, sh by putting the um, the, uh, the, the, the noodle around the uh, edge to make it softer on the, on, the four, on the wrists. These are all the pieces. So we have the two dowels, a base, a little extra uh, cutout right here to support this, right? And we have the top. This top will have uh, a noodle wrapped around it like this to make it really soft, right? Go like this, slide those in, slide it in the top, maybe easier to go like this. Perfect, there you go, it's not going anywhere. And then this base right here, I probably want to, I'm probably going to want to like smoothen this up or ease the edges just a little bit, just make sure it doesn't, nobody hits it, hurt themselves. This is going to have a noodle wrapped around the front of it, so that way it's nice and soft, so you can push against it. Okay, so this is it. That's the project right there. We're almost done. We're just going to make it more comfortable. So here's the piece uh, partially constructed. I want to show you something really important about um, uh, woodworking uh, that you're going to probably, you will encounter sooner or later if you continue to do this stuff. You see how wobbly that is? Right. It, for the most part, it's really unstable, so it's not going to be really good for what its intended purpose is. So, what's happening, right, is that dowels 
All right, like these. This is this measurement of this dowel is written as one and a quarter inch diameter. And um, this hole here, these holes, are one and a quarter inch in diameter. Right now, the problem is why this why is this so so wobbly? Well, these dowels are not con consistent. So what you want to do is uh, when you when you make a hole like this in your piece, you need a really good fit. You need to go to the store you're going to purchase these dowels from to make sure that the diameter actually fits nicely. So here's an here's a here's a dowel that's going to be a little bit better of a fit. Right? See that? It doesn't move compared to that. Okay, so just remember, take your piece to wherever you're going to purchase your dowel rods and try them out. It should fit like this, nice and snugly. Nothing should be moving, all right? Good. Just something to take into consideration when you work with dowel. Dowels. The next thing I'm going to do, i got to make this a little bit safer to use, so I'm going to have to use my router to take uh, a little bit of a, make a curvature around the side of this. Uh, this base and I'm going to do a little curvature around the top of this. This is not going to be really that necessary. Uh, this is the top part because um, I'm going to put some sterile foam. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, I guess it is foam. Yes, it's a hydrocarbon based product. I'm going to place that around the top of this and I'm going to duct tape it around. But I think I think I'm just going to like ease all the corners just to make sure that it's soft and safe, not so hard. So to, to do that, I have this bit right here. Um, you might have seen this bit before. And it, it's going to make that same shape. You can see it better there. It's going to make the same shape going around the side of the uh, actual piece. So put this in the router. And, uh, So that should do it. And then what I'll do, I'll just use the router to cut out, ease it all on the edges of. What I'm gonna do now is line up the uh, the bit with uh, the piece itself. I just need to cut a little bit off, not too too much. So I'm just gonna get the depth right. Um, so I'm using it from the side here. This is this is the bottom anyway. I want you to see. I need to just take a little bit off the edge so. Not too, too much. So what I'm going to do here is uh, roll this up. Oops, it's the wrong way. Just need to take a little bit off. Okay, so that's all I need. I don't really need too much. I just need to move this up a bit so I can get some clearance for the guide to follow the piece itself without touching the ground. So that's what I was doing. Um, probably just roll it up a little bit more. As I said, I don't need a lot of room. I don't need a lot of, a lot of material to be removed. Yeah, that's it. That should be enough. That way the, the bit itself has clearance when it sits along and goes around. And it just eases the eases a little bit off the edge of the uh of the workpiece itself. So that's it. Go ahead and clamp this down like this. Just so I can uh not have the piece slide as I route around the edges. And then um, I'm going to uh Plug my router in.
All right, so that's good. The bit depth is set. Don't forget your glasses. Don't forget your respirator. That's it. It's really, really quick and fat. It's just so easy. Like the edge is now really soft and smooth, so you're not getting all those sharp edges where people can like really jam their feet and toes too much. Um, the corners here can't get to them because the router, because of the router's diameter. What you can do though, because I made a mistake when I built this, I would have just routed this first before I actually put this on. But you get the idea. So let's go ahead and do that to this. So that's it. It's hard to see. I'm not really sure if you can see it or not, but it's nice and soft now. There's no like hard edges. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is do the same thing for the top part here. So this is the bottom down, right? I'm going to route around it. So, and this would be good because I might prolong the um, the tape that's, that I'm going to use to hold it down. Okay. Yeah, don't forget your glasses and your respirator. And that's the entire piece. All, all the corners are eased really nicely, so that way you know any sharp edges protruding. And um, yeah, you could do the same thing with this a piece of sandpaper, but the router, and that bit makes it a lot faster. Now that we have the uh, pieces all eased on the sides, we're gonna take this. Um, you probably could stop here if you wanted to. Because I think this is nice now to push your wrists, your 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 forearms against. Um, it doesn't hurt anymore because it's no longer sharp. But uh, I'm going to continue to make this a little bit more comfortable. So I'm going to use this um, uh, Super Swim Noodle. It's called. If you can see the uh, any information about it, get as close as I can. So that's what I'm going to use right now. 
and uh, this is a little thicker than a regular swim noodle. I got it from Target, so it's called Super. Super is a medium size, and there's another one that's even thicker. So uh, I'm gonna use this. I, I chose the Super because I was just experimenting. I don't know if it's gonna be better or not. But here we go. You ready? So I'm gonna line up the size of this. Okay. Right. I could possibly use my marker. Um, well, let's see what we can do here. Alright, so here's the, uh, try to mark it the best I can. Alright, so we have that there. I'm going to try to cover the whole thing. Boy, that's really working well. Alright, that's cool. So, alright, here we go. All right, so that's marked up. Right. I'm going to cut this right around here. Okay. So that's it, right? So that's going to be the, uh, the piece for the top. And then what I'm going to do now is... Uh, I'm going to cut it down the middle, slide it on, and tape it up. So you're going to watch this part. You can fast forward if you want, but uh, I'm going to leave it all in the video. So here we go. So this is the center part here. See these holes? I'm gonna have to like make sure I don't at least do something to keep those holes in place. See, so that, just like that, right, so your forearms can go against it, and you're not, uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. So what I'll do now, right, I'm going to take some duct tape and go around it like this, and then I'll cut around the holes just to make sure that the, that the piece the, can, the holes can remain visible and easy to slide in. So, here we go. Right, let's start with the middle. Make sure that's all slid. Uh, yeah, it's all, all definitely it's slid as far as it can go. All right, Run around like that. I'm getting a lot of pulling a lot of force on it because I want it to be fairly durable. Very much stuck to it really well. And then now I'm going to go ahead and just bring that all the way across to here. Okay. Across the top of the area. Okay, so that's it, right? Alright, so now it's in place. What I'm going to do is um, just going to make sure that these holes remain easily accessible. So.
that's good. Okay. There's another one right here. So now the holes are no longer, um, you know, hidden by the piece itself. Okay, so now that we have those in place, I can go ahead and try to continue to uh, tape this down together. Or you could stop here. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it depends on what you want. A bit down. I don't know. Yeah, I would have covered some more. My aesthetic goal is to keep this as flat as possible, right? So I'm gonna have to start with the tape. Just push down as far as possible here. And I'm going to do the same on this side over here. figured out something just now to make it a lot easier for myself. Okay, so that's that, right? So that's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, just to make it look a little nicer, because this is going to be the top, I'm going to go like one strip across like that. Over time, this might not stay, but whatever. For now, just trying to make it look a little nicer.
Okay, so there you go. That's the top. And that's the bottom. Slide it on and it should be good. Take a, I took these three pieces, uh, two pieces of uh, plywood. I glued them together just to get the dimensions that I needed. And I'm going to build the piece that attaches to here that you place the uh, bar across. Okay, this is, a, this is an addition to the floor. Um, this, this can be used as is just on the floor. They're doing a handstand like that with their forearms against it. But I'm going to add the, uh, this is a, an upgrade to give you the ability to um, train your handstands on a, as if you're doing it on, on a bar. Okay, so again, so I'm going to take two plywoods, glue, glue them together. Uh, two pieces of plywood, glue them together so that way I can get the dimension I need. And then I'm going to uh, do a, a three inch rip cut all the way down. That's going to sit across like that, and then I'm going to drill a holster it and put uh, dowels on both sides, and they just sit on top of this. Now, because of the nature of how this is used, the only thing that you have to worry about is downward force right here. So, there's nothing back here, just downward force right here. So it's going to be pretty easy. You don't have to overbuild the joints or anything like that. You're just going to support the piece itself. I have my uh, piece set up. The table saws are already lined up with the depth of the cut. The, the blade itself, I'm not going to raise it up to cut really high. I'm just going to do it two times. So I'm going to pass the piece in like this, then flip it over, and then pass it in like that. And that way I, it'll, be, it'll, it'll cut all the way through. I don't have to risk having the blade so high because this table saw is super dangerous, like I've said to you before. All right, so I'm going to rip, make that cut right now. So that's the piece itself. You can see it's all, it's three inches now in depth. So that's going to be the part that sits across, drill the holster, and it'll float. I'm sorry, you might not have seen that. This is three inches. I'm going to drill the holes in and have it float. So what we have here is a bit of a tricky problem to figure out because um, my hands are a little larger than uh, that a gymnast that I work with, or people that I work with. If I was going to do this for adults, I wouldn't be so, so concerned. But I want to give you an example of the, of the problem that I'm talking about. So, let's say you, uh, you had your hands down like this, right? Okay, so. Let me try to get myself a better position. So your hands are down like this. So you need to grab a bar, right? So your wrist ends up being pretty straight down like that right so 
the distance from here to here needs to be pretty, pretty good. As a, it can't be too far out because you won't be able to push back against this. It can't be too far in because your wrists will roll out like that, right? So it needs to be some, something. So I'm gonna say, so I'm using this dowel to give me a positioning, right? Um, all right, so this is super tricky. I'm I'm just guessing at this with you because I don't really know for sure. You can basically build this multiple times and see what makes the most sense, that captures the most um, of your audience. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for um, the distance is gonna be the width of this dowel, right? Like that. Okay, so let me, let me put this here, like that. Yeah, I'm gonna think. I think I'm gonna do that. The distance is gonna be. Uh, oops. Okay. Make sure this is nice and flat. I'm gonna make it. The same distance here, but a little bit like, qu like a quarter inch out more in front of it. Nah, yeah, yeah, about a quarter inch more out in front. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So it's this distance plus a quarter inch more out. So uh, what does that look like? Uh, let's see. So, so that's nice and flat. This is flat. Oops. Okay. So I'm gonna go out to like that much. A little bit more. Sorry, something like that, right? So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mark the back here. Okay. That's gonna give me my distance from here to here and then I'm going to try to let's see get as close as possible to this all right so see those two lines I need to go a quarter inch that way like that quarter inch this way and drill the hole so it's going to be something like this here quarter inch out that way drill the hole through and that should give me the, uh, the distance I think should work best so I'm going to guess at some dimensions here for this um, so first off this is the piece I'm going to use with to uh, support the dowels okay so this is the dimensions these are the dimensions yeah I don't know if you can see it. This is a uh, 17 inches from here to here, and three inches from here to here. Okay, so three inches from here to here, 17 inches from here to here. Okay, from here, the end to here is. Uh, It's 13 sixteenths of an inch. So from here to here, it's 13 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so from the end to here, and that's where this, that's where the, um, that's the outer side of the, that's the outer diameter of the dowel, okay? Same thing coming in from this side. So what I need to do now, right, again, 13, 13 sixteenths from here to here. 13 sixteenths from here to here. I need to mark the top of this. So, because when I've set it up my drill press, I need to be, it has to be consistent. So, I'm going to put like an arrow like this. Okay, this means top. Arrows like that. Okay, so that's the top. It's really important. Okay, 
right, so I need to now go, um, I'm going to go, uh, if this dowel is one and a quarter inch in, right, like this, let's see, oh yeah, actually, I can just use the dowel itself, right, so I put the dowel here on the end, like that. Oops, that's not going to work. Sorry. Yeah, that's going to work. Okay, hold on. Okay, so this is one and a quarter. I'm just make sure. Yes, it is. Okay. So, I'm going to go like this. All right, so I need to go... I need to know what one and a quarter looks like all the way across. Actually, no, I just need to know what... Um, let's see. 12, okay, so, mm, 16, 20, so 10, I need to go, yes, yeah, so 8, 16, 24, okay, so, 20, so I need to go 20, 20 in, so, ah, one second here, all right, so we have 13 sixteenths here. I need to go over, I just need to get to the middle of this right here. So that's going to give me, um, so this is one and a quarter. So I need to go over 8 sixteenths, no, 8 sixteenths would be like half. So 10 sixteenths, I need to go over 10 sixteenths, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's going to be the center point right here of the dowel, right? Okay, I need to now do measure this um, one and a half inch. Okay. Take this, draw a line. Okay, so now that's centered. I have my my X right there, that's going to be the center hole for this, all right? All right, so let me give you the final dimensions. So the drill hole, this is going to be one and a half from here to here. So uh, one and eight sixteenths of an inch from here to here, to the center, right? You already know that because this is three inches, okay? so. From here to here is one and eights, right? From here to here, right, is one and seven sixteenths. So if you want to go one and eight sixteenths, it's totally fine, but it's one and seven sixteenths, okay? And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up my uh, my um, drill press so that way I can just do the same drill on the same side multiple times and it will be exactly the same distance from the top, okay? So most modern drill presses have this guard thing that you uh, attach. And it's for specific things like this, when you need to do the exact same drill press cut over and over again. So it's called, those are called gang, gang cuts, right? So here's the top arrows, right? Top arrows, right? So I'm going to drill this hole right here. It's going to drop down a bit in there. You know what the truth is? Let me, uh, let me raise this. So bear with me as I align this again. This thing's just changed. Okay. So I line this up, right? Let's make sure to that. Yeah, alright. So I'm gonna drill down, right? So drill down, not too far, because it's going to see it's going to hit the metal. 
right? So I'm just gonna go to possibly lower this guard down so I don't hit metal. Okay, so what I'll do, right, I'm going to uh, drill this here, keep the top side that way, flip it over, top side's that way, drill it out on that side, right, I should have, the hole should be exactly the same, right, and then I'll move the guard and I'll drill all the way through so I can get to uh, the end, maybe, or not, I might just keep the... Uh, I might just go pretty far down and stop like that. Actually, no, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I just thought about that. All right, so, I don't think I need to, cause I'm gonna, I wanna glue this together. Yeah, this is actually a better way to go. I'm gonna, cause I'm gonna glue the, uh, the dowel in and I wanna screw it down so that way it does not doesn't spin. Yeah. That's perfect. Cool. So I'm gonna go like that. So I got my depth guard set. I got my alignment set. And uh, here we go. Don't forget your uh, resp respirator and your uh, glasses. All right, so I have my holes cut, right? So what I should, what will happen now, I'm gonna cut this in half, and these two holes should line up exactly the same. It's uh, the piece that we drilled out the holes on both sides, and um, it's marked top, so you can see the top, the arrows right here, the top, the arrows at the top right here. So I need to cut this in half, right? So this is 17 inches from here to here, remember this? So the middle of this is going to be eight and a half inches. So that's this line right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is cut this now with the uh, double bevel sliding compound saw. Right, so that cut is right in the middle. There you go. Pretty much exactly the same size. All right. So I've chosen to uh, to 
take uh, this side here. I'm going to drill this side all the way through so I can keep the alignment with this side. <clears throat> I have a sacrificial piece of wood here underneath. Right. I have the depth all set up so that I can make sure it goes all the way down and all the way through. Yes. So I'm going to go like that. Make sure this piece is actually covering underneath so that way when it breaks through it doesn't damage the piece too much. Alright, so that's it. So it's all the way through, and uh, that's the upside. This is the upside. It'll go all the way through like that. And there you go. It's, it sits perfectly. Um, so you can see it. So that's it. So now they both have the same orientation and when they go through and glue them together they'll sit sit flat so now what I gotta do I have to get the cut length for the dowel right so what I did I placed the dowel inside the piece the side that doesn't have the hole in it like that and then I know that it's going to go all the way to the very end. So I got to line this up with this side here. Okay. And I'm going to make sure it matches. It goes all the way down to here. So I'm going to use this here to get a feel for the height. I just need to get a rough length of the piece itself. Okay, so that looks good. What I'm going to do is draw a line so I can uh, kind of get an idea where to cut it because this is going to sit like this. So somewhere around here would be fine. All right, so I'm going to cut it right around here. So my, my uh, double bevel compound saw, and I'm um, just going to line this cut up. Uh, I can always be a little bit bigger, so that way I can uh, cut it back a little bit more. So you can't cut short and then go big. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger than the line, and then I'm going to cut it back if I need to. So now that I have my piece cut, I'm going to try to line it up again, so... So that's the top side. It's the 
top on this side. Got a little extra sticking out here. Can just line it down a little bit more like that. If I want it to sit flush. So do a little bit more. This is just giving me an idea like how much to cut off just so I can get it nice and flush. That's so much better. So that's going to line up really nicely with the piece. I'll do just a little bit more. So there you go. Yeah, that's it. So that's going to sit on top of here. Right? Just like that. And I can do it just a little more somewhere. Let's see. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah. So this will be in front, like this. And then, you can go ahead and get your hands and get a feel for how much space you need. So you can adjust it now, you know, before you glue it all down to see what really makes more sense for you, all right? So I did this setup to uh, to get it all uh, lined up and to test it to see like how far in front I need it to be, and I realized something. Um, remember, I was like so trying to figure out how far forwards to go. It does actually doesn't matter with that because back here, right, gives you lots of le lots of leeway to adjust it once you get the uh, the piece in place. So what I'm going to do from that line that I drew back here. I'm going to add about, um, looks like about a half of an inch to it. Okay. So I'll give you the final dimensions here. Pull that off. Okay, so. From here to center of this hole to here, right? So again. Remember, this piece from here to here is eight and a half, I'm, um, yeah, eight and a half inches, right? So let me just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and, it's more like eight and, eight and seven eighths, which is, makes sense because I was trying to cut in the middle, so this side must be a little bit longer. But, from the center of this hole, to this for me I think this is the this, this is the best um, solution is um, I think this distance will be best for more people um, one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven and So it's seven and six eighths. Six, 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 I'm sorry, six sixteenths. Yeah. Yeah, seven and six sixteenths. So from here, this from the edge of this to the very, very back is seven and seven sixteenths. Seven and six sixteenths, okay? So from here to here. And that's what I would use to, uh, so now that I have my piece all lined up, um, I gotta make a little lip. So this is the top side. I gotta create a, glue a little lip onto this right here. 
So I'm going to use this piece of plywood right here. And uh, that's the line. I marked this already where it's going to be glued onto. Right. And I need to go like still a cut across the bottom of this. Right. So I'm going to cut that right there. You can see it. There you go. I need to cut that right off right there, cut it down the middle and glue it onto the bottom of those things. Okay? So this cut I'm going to use the uh, double, double bevel sliding compound saw for, but it's a little dangerous. So what I have to do, I have to like, okay, I'll line it up, right, get it right on that line, and then slip this guard in here, tighten that down, right? So that'll cut it. It won't. So I can push it that way, right? So I'm gonna use this. See this weird piece of wood? I use it all the time to like do things like this. So go like that. So that way I can keep my fingers far away from it. I'll just cut it down like that. Okay. So here we go. So here's the piece I just cut. It's gonna, you know, I have to cut it in half so it could be on both sides of this right here. So to mark it to get the to get the distance, right? Let's go like this. Take this like that. Just put it roughly where you think it's gonna be. Draw a line like this, and you have a line like that. And do the same for. Uh, the other side here. Cool. So you just cut off both those lines and you have the piece that you want. And then that's it. So what I'll probably do, I'm going to just, uh, I don't really know how I'm going to try to cut this, but I'll try to figure it out. What I decided to do, I'm going to use this saw to cut this like this, right? But it's like, too small to use the same piece twice. So what I had to do is uh, reline this up so to get the right depth. So I, I put the, 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 the piece of wood back, slide that down, push that in, and I slide this in this to make me know the exact distance. Then that's set. Once I know that, I pull it back up, right? Keep that here to the side. Slide this piece on right here, and it's going to be exactly the same um, uh, dimension as the other one. So again, I take this here, right? Push that in like that. That looks perfect. And then I'm going to cut it. Now that both of these are the same, so what I'll do now, right, I need to line up this cut. So, let's turn this, loosen this up. So that looks good. Back it up just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's 
just gonna tighten that down. And then what I'll do cut that with this. All right, so now I have these two pieces. Obviously, you saw the thing I did. I let the blade stop before I pulled it up. If I did that, I wouldn't have marred the other. I wouldn't have marred the uh, this piece. But anyway, you get the idea. It's done now. That's it. That's the that's the little. So we have uh, the sides. It's flips up. It's, this is flipped upside down. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to glue these down. I'll probably end up, um, I got my hot water and my rag already set up. Get rid of the extra stuff. But I'm probably going to end up just putting one screw in it. Because it's not, it's not like a strong joint. It's not intended to be really strong because there's not a lot of load on it. So, um, So I'll glue it, and then I'll clamp it, and then I'll screw it down. So again, I'm going to glue it, let it touch. Okay, so. Let it sit to the touch, just like that. Okay. All right. So let that sit for a little bit. Then what I'll do once it sets, I'll. Uh, I'll glue it down. I mean, I'll uh, clamp it, give it some pressure. So that way, it'll hold really well. And then I'll probably, I'll screw it down after that. good let it sit for a little bit and then like I said I'll glue it down I mean I'll uh, clamp it so give it a little bit more pressure I clamped this down like I said I was gonna do uh, it looks pretty settled in right now uh, it should be fine uh, it doesn't need a lot a lot a lot of time 
it's not really a big heavy joint. It's going to get a lot of work. So, so that's that. So this is set, right? Okay. So again, these are the little lips it's going to be on. Okay. There are other ways to do a fancier joint, but I didn't want to do it because of uh, I was trying to figure out, make a guess like what would be the target audience for this, and uh, how would they um, how would they behave when it looked like it got too complicated. But there are a lot of ways to do this. You know, you'd probably keep this as one big piece, cut it out, cut it out, chop it, chop it. But again, this is like a little simpler way to approach this project. Okay, so the next thing we want to do now is um, okay, so it's going to sit like that. Okay. All right. So once that's there, all right, we need to put. Some uh, glue some pieces like this underneath it. See? Just to make sure it doesn't slide anymore. So, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, use this wood I have right here. Something like this. Okay. Right, and it looks to me here that um, this is about that long. So, okay, I'm gonna do a couple things here. I'm gonna do a rip cut this way, just to get this dimension like that, and then I'm going to take that and glue that onto this right here. So I'm going to do a rip cut that way, and cut the two pieces off and stick them onto the bottom of these. I need to make a cut this wide, all the way down a rip cut, right? And this just happens to be the same width as this, right? So instead of measuring, I could just go like that, I'll just show you. Table saw go like this. And there you go. That's the actual width of this cut. I'm gonna go like that. Cool. So there you go. So I'm gonna pass it down like that. Put this on here. Like this. This is for is just to protect myself from kickback. Holy injuries. Don't ever want that stuff to happen. Right. Slide it through just so. Perfect. Okay. Here you have the, um, this is the base, this is the front, uh, the piece I just rip cut. Just gonna line it up with this here. Draw a line like that. So 
see what it looks like on this side. Let's see if it matches over here. Yes, it is very close. Okay, so what I'll do is um, get to set up a cut two times, so one time, one time, or one time from there, one time from this side. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll probably do it from this side because this this side's a little uneven. So I'll do two cuts this way, and then two batch cuts that way, and I should have the pieces for the front. So here's the uh, cut set up. I have it all um, line, um, distance set. So I'm going to do a little bit of... Uh, I'm going to do it like right on the line because it doesn't really matter if it's uh, perfect because it just needs to support downwards. Um, but it should be, should be pretty close to... Let me just get it a little bit tighter. A tighter fit. Yeah, all right, that should work. So those are the two pieces I'm going to use underneath in the front to support the, uh, the piece itself. This is the base. These are the front parts where the uh, hands will go on. Okay, these are the parts that go underneath like that. So that's those, right? And then uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I need to line them up so when I glue them down, oops, sorry. Okay. so here we go. So I need to line them up so that way I know where to, where to put the glue, or where to put the position the pieces themselves. Okay. So to do that, what I'm going to do is you know, I'll pull these out okay, and we'll flip this on the side like that. Okay. okay. So once this, once these are on the side, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line like this. Okay, so that's the top. Line the bottom up. Double checking my lines. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now that I have my lines in place, all I want to do is um, set my glue. All right, so I'm gonna just mark an X. It's the side I'm gonna glue on. Right. So it goes like that, and then these will be on the front like this. So I have my warm rag and the glue, and then like just smear this all over this front part here. There you go. So that's that. Extra glue back in there.
Okay, here we go. So. Oops. <laughs> let, me this part, let me get this right. down like that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, so there's something I can do to help this actually get lined up really well. I can just kind of put it like this, I think. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but... Kind of like that. No! <laughs> I moved the other side now. I suck. This would be a better way to do it. Maybe I like this. This might be a better way to do it. Oh yeah, duh. This is a better way to line it up. Okay. 
I think this is a good way to go. What I'm going to do now is uh, actually going to do a little clamping of the uh, of the base itself. Yeah, it looks good. So that's it. I think I'm gonna let that uh, let that set for a little bit, and then I'm gonna clamp it down after. So go ahead and uh, replicate it like that. That way you don't have to worry about the position and being perfect. And you can always uh, clean up things later on. All right. So it's all glued down. It should be dry now. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, these off and then I'm going to screw them down All right so that's that Okay, so that's all glued together. It just sits in here like this. It's good. It's really nice and snug too, so you want that so it doesn't roll around or anything like that. Um, my concern is um, these pieces here. I should probably screw them down because they're not really strong joints, they're just butt joints. and Traditionally they are super weak. So I'm going to go ahead and um, screw these down. All right. I got some screws to try to um, turn to, uh, to to just to drill this down. I don't want to get too crazy about the, uh, the drilling down because um, it's not exactly it's not going to get a lot of load, but it's going to make some pilot holes first here. This whole set, what I'm going to do, I probably should countersink these a little bit just to uh, get this out of the way so it doesn't stick out too much. So, to do that, I'm going to get another bit. I'll be right back. I used to own this awesome countersink bit, but I, um, it's been a while so I can't find it. So, I'm going to have to use this other technique. So, I'm, let's see, show what I'm doing. 
So this bit, this is just a little bit of a bigger diameter, forced a bit. I use these. It's the same bit, it's a smaller version of the bit that I used to drill out the holes that I have in the um in, in this drill press. So this down to make my life a little easier. Hello internet. Alright, so here we go. So it's going to be my countersink hole. Okay, so all I'm doing is just setting a countersink so that way when these screws go in, they don't stick out. Um, and then I'm going to try to screw it in. So if everything goes well, it should be pretty smooth sailing. This. Okay. Don't get too aggressive with getting it super tight because you don't want to split the plywood. enough to hold it in place. Okay, so that's that. Let's try to do the same thing on these uh, these two up here. We'll turn it so you can uh, can see the process. So, here I am. Okay, same thing again. Three stages, right? You ready? Here we go. First stage. Drill the hole. This is called a relief hole. Because it relieves the stress around the wood. So I got all the way down. Okay. So you get your relief holes. Stir a countersink so the screws don't stick out. Wish me luck. This, no, this looks too thick. I'm gonna have to go with this. Uh, these small 
smaller, flat, flatter screws. Uh, uh, this Philip will work. Yes. I'm trying to avoid using the flat screws because, well, you know, they don't stick too well. They end up being, they strip easily. You know, so I have one Phillips here. Flathead screws. These things are so cheap, they just strip, so I'm not sure how this is going to work. The relief hole should help a lot, though. Oh, that battery sounds nice and strong, doesn't it? This means it's probably going to give me a hard time right here with this one. So there you go. All the sides are screwed down just enough so that way at least you have some additional support. And uh, that's it. So now we're gonna get a, we have to glue the, this uh, the dowel in. We don't have to. I think we should do it because when you're in a hand seat, you don't seem to roll at all. I think over time, like right now it doesn't roll. I think over time it might get loose. And I suspect this will get a lot of usage. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this here, right, and okay, put some glue in there. I'm going to take the extra glue out of here and put it in this. Now a lot's going to come out on this side because it's just it's a, it's a, it's an open hole and it's really tight so um, all right, so once that's done, we gotta glue this together. That's in. And so is that. Just gonna make sure it's nice, it stays flat. So it settles. That's it, there's no one doing it. Okay. So that's flat. That's as flat as it gets. Um, probably gonna. Yeah, it's gonna let that sit like that. It's not much going on with this, you know, as you can see. Uh, wipe off the excess glue. And 
that's it. That should be the last piece of wood that needs to be glued. I'm going to put it together right now so you can see what it looks like. Again, this is an optional attachment, you don't have to have it, but it's for when you want to train your handstands on the, um, on the, uh, what you call it, uh, on, like what it would feel like on the bar. So you do that, and then get these right here, put those in. These are the loose ones, by the way, so don't, uh, Don't be alarmed at how, how much movement you see. Okay, so go like this, go like that, put those in like this, and there you go. That's it. That's your handstand right there. So just push down and try to hold that thing like this. Cool? Nice job, right? Alright, so this is what you do for training the bars. If you just want to train, uh, you don't want to train bars, you just go ahead and put this on top like that. And then you can just train it against the floor if you want to work your floor handstands. Okay? Um, yep, well, we have one more thing to do and we're almost done. So, what you might notice is that. Uh, these dowels, uh, they may, they'll be a little challenging to uh, to actually get into place. And that's common because these, you know, the diameter is not perfect, right? So you're gonna have a, it's like a little fight to get get them in. So to help you out a little bit, right? I'm gonna use this thing called Butcher's Bowling Alley Wax. I don't think they make this anymore, but just look up Bowling Alley Wax. And uh, it's really good for um, uh, decreasing the coefficient of friction between the, the wood. So, right, so what you do, just go ahead and take a little bit of this, rub it in there like that. I'm gonna do it on both sides because um, you know I just want to make it your life a little easier. All right, cool. So. That's that. That should make things a little easier. Right? And then should slide in a lot easier. That feels good to me. So this That's awesome. All right, so that's that, that works really, really well. So let's see what this. So here's the addition. Here's the bars training part. Bam! Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Motion Design Studio handstand trainer. That's for you, ladies and gentlemen. You're seeing it for the first time in completion. This is the beta model, so I'm gonna run some tests, have some kids play with it, see how they rock it. Um, I don't know, even some adults too. All right, so let's see. 
get all the information you need. It's an open source project. Hope it works really well for you. Whoa, 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 I almost forgot. There's one more important thing I need to do. So here we have the most important part that you could do at the very, very end. Uh, these pieces are a mistake. Uh, I purchased this Velcro from Home Depot. It, I tested it. I just wanted to test it. It actually does work. It gives enough grip. But I don't think it's going to really work over a long period of time, uh, let alone um, as the weight of the gymnast goes up. So what I did get is this, uh, it's this Velcro right here. Um, it's much thicker, you can see. Uh, you have to buy special order online, so one, two, three. It's four inches in width. So it's four inches in width Velcro. And uh, yeah. we usually use it uh, to, to, sup, to, to, to stick the carpet together at the gymnasium. So what I'm going to do, right, I'm going to go ahead and cut. I'm going to put two. Let's see if I can get a strip here. Uh, one there. I'm going to put two strips in the middle and call it a quits for now. And if I upgrade this design, I'll, uh, I'll, let, I'll let you know. But I think two strips in the middle should be pretty solid. So that's that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, just flip this over and put some weight on it. I'm sure I can probably just, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Should work. So I'm going to make sure I get some weight on top of that. Cool. And then I'm going to let that dry, and uh, that's it. There's nothing else left to do other than test it. So today is a really good day. 
Um, what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you how to modify this because I got some really good uh, data from, uh, from, from product usage and my little clients point out some really important things. I can see them struggle, right? So the displacement from here to here when in this bars mode is really, really tricky to get right unless you uh, know your clients already. So this was a guess the first time I made it, right? So what I did, right, I, I, um, I'm gonna have to pull this, instead of moving this right here, I'm gonna make this top wider so it goes out that way more. And that way the hands, the forearms get a lot closer to where it should be in a handstand. Because right now it's a little too short, so I gotta move it over some more, right? The, uh, this is going to be the easiest thing to modify, the, the width of this. Uh, this should stay the same. You don't want to make this any shorter because uh, it needs to have a lot of distance to have downwards force onto the floor. Um, the, uh, yeah, the height of this is also kind of tricky uh, because from here to here, when the gymnasts have their, their wrist guards on, it pushes against the wrist guard, so it kind of creates this, like, uh, it's hard for them to, like, balance themselves. And you don't want them to take their wrist guards off because there's just too much back and forth. So, these, the, the dowel that holds this part up needs to go up a little bit. So you need to have two dowels set, settings. This would be good for uh, really small gymnasts that are, you know, really short ones that are doing bars training height, for training handstands on bars. Uh, if they if they get a little taller, so we're looking at like about uh, four and a half feet on up. It seems like this needs to go up about three inches from the original uh, design, so that way it gets right above the forearm right here. So that way they they can keep their grips on and don't have to worry about uh, all the time necessary to change it out. So those are the modifications I got. If you want to get the uh, the actual um, displacement from the front of this to the dowel. Uh, I want you to, you could do this. I'm gonna move my, here, I'm, I'm gonna stop the camera and show you. To get the distance from the front of this to the to the dowel itself, what you do, right, you take a, uh, a piece of thread, like this, and you just drop it down like that, right? And what you're what you're doing is uh, you're creating a plumb line, and you can use that plumb line. Oops, sorry. Right. So I'm going to try to show you from a little a little higher position. Maybe I know it's kind of hard to see, but anyway, you take uh, your ruler, right, and you measure from that string, and that's how you know how far it is from there to the edge or the center of the dowel. And for me, I need to move this back. I need to move this forwards one inch to make this a lot better for the gymnast. All right, that's how you figure out the displacement. So best of luck. I really hope you enjoyed this segment of, uh, I don't know, I should name this, because I'm doing this stuff, right? Um, I'm going to play with uh, a show that you might know of. Uh, I'm going to call this This Damn House, uh, episode of This Damn House by Motion Design. That's the name of it. Today is the genesis of This Damn House. Um, so anyway, hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, I hope that it was something that is useful to you and uh, hope that it brings you lots of joy. Um, I also hope that it works out really well too. So if you have any questions or uh, any feedback or improvements, Definitely feel uh, generous to share in the comments below. Uh, lots of people uh, could, could benefit greatly from your ideas if you have any improvements. It's an open source project, so definitely go ahead and improve upon it. Um, definitely give me some accreditation if you can. So I'm sorry. Wow, that, that's a weird word. Uh, how about some um, uh, tags and likes and uh, credits for the actual thing itself, the handstand trainer? But anyway, I uh, hope that you enjoyed it, and um, I don't know, it's a fun project for me. Uh, again, I'm Lex Peters. If you want to find me, 
support me, help me help you, definitely go to my Amazon wish list and uh, you'll see all the tools that I'll need to like make other projects and document it. Um, I'm a big fan of open source. I think it's important to share knowledge and to give it away. Uh, it shouldn't belong to anyone. Um, it's a key part of how I've become better as a person by access to knowledge that other people have uh, worked on and created over the many centuries, decades of uh, documented knowledge. Um, so please feel free to share this, steal it, upload it, repost it, whatever you want to do. I don't care. Just at least give me a tag. Say, hey, I got this from Motion Design Studio episode of uh, This Damn House, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more from you. Again, look for me on Instagram, Motion Design Studio, Facebook, Motion Design Studio, and that's YouTube also, Motion Design Studio, and then I have my mo-de.net um, website, so I hope to hear from you. And again, like and share, and let everybody know that this is a good thing, what we have going. All right?